What's that? Angels are common. Angels are common. Hmm. Wow. 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 Angels are common. Wow. You know what the angels are common? You know what you know what angels are, right? They're the reapers. It's prophetic. You're gonna see how prophetic that is in a minute. Even the thunders and the lightnings and everything that's going on. And blow you the trumpet in Zion and sound the alarm in my holy mountain. Let all the inhabitants of the land tremble for the day of the Lord cometh. For it is nigh at hand. A day of darkness and gloomness. A day of clouds and thick darkness. As the morning spread upon the mountains. A great people and strong. There hath not been ever like. Neither shall they be any more after even the years of many generations. A fire devoureth before them and behind them. A flame burneth. The land is as the garden of Eden before them, and behind them a desolate wilderness. Yea, and nothing shall escape them. The appearance of them is as the appearance of horses, and as horsemen so they shall run. Like the noise of chariots on the tops of mountains, they shall leap like the noise of the flame of fire that devoureth a stubble, as strong people set in array. Before their face the people shall be much pained. All the faces shall gather the blackness they shall run like mighty men they shall climb the wall like men of war and they shall march every one on his ways and they shall not break their ranks neither shall one thrust another they shall walk every one in his path and when they shall fall upon the sword they shall not be wounded they shall run to and fro in the city. They shall run upon the wall. They shall climb up upon the houses. They shall enter into the windows like a thief. And the earth shall quake before them. The heavens shall tremble. The sun and the moon shall be dark. And the stars shall withdraw from their shining. The Lord shall utter his voice before his army. For his camp is great. For he is strong that executeth, executeth his word. For the day of the Lord is great and very terrible. And who can abide it? That's the Lord's coming, man. That is the Lord's coming. And we are going to, we're going to open with that. Blow the trumpet in Zion. Sound the alarm. Wow. Come on. Most assuredly, I'll say to you, who believes in me, the works I do, you will also do, also greater works than these, I will do because I go to my Father. And whatever you, whatever you ask in my name, I will do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you ask anything in my name, I will do it. And if you love me and keep my commandments, I pray you the Father will give you another helper. Helper. Well, I'll cleave. The Holy Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive. But you see him and you know him, but he knows you know him and he knows you. That he may dwell in you, he may dwell in you forever. I will not leave you off this. I will come to you. He said he did not leave us. He sent a helper with the Holy Spirit to come and follow us. Amen. Hallelujah. I wish Jason had the song, the music. Remember that song? The joy unspeakable and full of glory. Full of glory. Full of glory. Joy unspeakable and full of glory. I got one. Thank you. <laughs> All right. Good to see you, Holly. Huh? Come on. 
Give it to us. So the last uh, couple of weeks for me has been kind of dry. spiritually, mentally, just very drained, um, even physically. Um, just everybody getting sick and um, just kind of one thing after another. But um, I was still able to see, like I, I knew what God was doing, what, what's around me. So that was encouraging, but it was still like extra heavy for whatever reason. Um, our chickens, um, we have four chickens that went ruby. Um, so they've been sitting for uh, a month. Well, last week, our dogs got into the uh, chicken run, like back to back. The first the first morning it happened was really disturbing. It was just, it was just very gloomy, you know, like a death presence and just very, very odd. So, um, at first when I went out there, I thought all the chickens were dead, but they weren't. So anyways, um, the dog got in there like three times within two days. Um, so that was very up and down. Um, but, we, but our, our broody chickens stayed sitting the entire time. They didn't get out. They, they, they just continued to do what they, what they needed to do. And so all the while with me, you know, I've been like, like this, just up and down and up and down, but also knowing that just what's, what's ahead. Um, well, yesterday, three of our chicks hatched. Um, so that was exciting, you know. And this morning, John got the kids, and they came up here, and I sat down and ate breakfast. And God just showed me that um, how, just how I knew through, through these last couple of weeks that just what's coming and why it's happening and why it's difficult and why it's dry. Um, he showed me that the harvest is here. Like the time of like the hardship and then like well, what is to come was here. And he showed it to me. Um, the dogs and the chickens. To the dogs and the chickens that those chickens, they watched, you know, their other chicken friends get murdered and the roosters killed and beat up and, um, and they just sat. They sat and they sat and they sat. They they didn't seem to get too freaked out. I mean, they just they had what they had to do and that's what they knew. Wow. And now their chicks are hatching. And wow. he just showed me. Um, it was just encour- It was just really encouraging for me that to, he he just spoke that the fruitful time is here. That we know. Now I want now I want you to take notice too. I'm not going to get crazy, okay? I want. <laughs> Y'all laughing at me, but I'm not. <laughs> Y'all laughing with me, but I, I, I'm, I'm serious. And, but I want you, I want you to take notice to the things that are being said. I want you to take notice to what Holly said. Harvest. I want you to take notice to the thick black clouds that are outside. I want you to take notice to the thunder that you're hearing right now. Because there's no coincidence in God. There's none. Okay. Um, the very time it is right now, it's Pentecost. Um, we're gonna we're gonna go into something. It's gonna take me, you know, uh, it's gonna take me a, a little while to unfold this all of this. So I'm not gonna try to, you know to spit on you all in one day, (laughs) you know, because I I really want you to get it and I want you to understand it. Um, So let's look at the board and see what the board says, because we're going to, we have been coming through some time, and I'm going to read it to you. Pentecost, the countdown to Sinai, and we're going to read today some stuff, okay? We're going to, uh, and I wrote here Exodus chapter 19, Exodus chapter 19, 1 through 25. We're going to make, we're going to tie in some big connections today on Pentecost. The countdown to Mount Sinai is the countdown to seeing him face to face. Man, we're going to tie some stuff in. I know you have some preconceived notions about, I know there's teachings out there. The spring feast speaks of his first coming. The fall feast speaks of his second coming. 
I know this, I know this already. And I have prior teachings showing how God, how the feast are the one and the same. And, you know, but just hear me out, okay? And we can get into that later. The countdown to Mount Sinai is the countdown to seeing him face to face. The countdown to Mount Sinai is the countdown to his coming. The countdown to Mount Sinai is the countdown to the marriage. Wow. Wow. The countdown to Mount Sinai is the countdown to Judgment Day. The countdown to Mount Sinai is the secret that unlocks the mystery of Yeshua, Jesus, returning for His bride. The countdown to Mount Sinai is Pentecost. And Peter gives us the key that unlocks its mystery. Be there or be left. Be there or be left. That's serious. There's a 50-day window. If you're not in it, you're left. You're gone. You see, in Jesus' day, you know, you might think there was, out of the 500, 120 was filled on the day of Pentecost. But okay, you know, the 380, they could have received the Holy Spirit afterwards. But now, if you're not in the upper room and ready on the day of Pentecost when the Lord returns on Pentecost, and I'm going to prove it to you, well then, you know, there's no chance. You're left. It's judgment day. And I'm going to show you. And I'm going to show it to you over and over and over and over and over and over and over again. And once I show it to you that many times, then, you know, it's... If God says He's the same yesterday, today, and forever, you know, then it's pretty obvious that's when it's going to be. So, let's check this out. So... Be there or be left. And then I wrote down here at the bottom, Luke 24, 49. But tarry ye in Jerusalem until you receive power. And we remember that Sister Charlene gave me the revelation of this word, tarry. The Greek, it means uh, kathizo. It means to sit on the seat of Moses to have the, cap the, the capacity to interpret the law of Moses with authority. Amen. So, if you go and tarry and wait to, you are, to be endued with power, it means you'll be able to go back and you'll be able to interpret the law of Moses with authority and you'll understand what it means. And how it all points to Christ. Not only His first coming, but His second coming. Amen. Amen. Right? Amen. Wow. So, that's the op Excuse me. That's the opening. That's pretty interesting. So what we're going to do is I'm going to break down. We're going to take this. We're going to take the countdown of Mount Sinai. We're going to start looking at Him face to face. Hey guys, we're going to take the countdown to Mount Sinai, His coming. We're going to take the countdown to Mount Sinai, the marriage. We're going to take the countdown to Judgment Day, and I'm going to start breaking these down one by one. And we're going to go through it. And we're going to find out that everything you see right here falls on the day of Pentecost beyond the shadow of a doubt. Beyond the shadow of a doubt. And that's kind of like, wow. Are you kidding me? Y'all ready? Yeah.
The only way you can understand this is you have to read. Let me... There's no coincidence... There's no coincidences in God. Okay? In fact, in the Hebrew... In the Hebrew, the word coincidence doesn't even exist. Okay. I've been teaching this whole, this past three weeks between, you know, between Passover and Pentecost. That's what I've been talking about. The Spring Feast. I've been teaching you guys on how to understand the Word of God in a deeper and more powerful way. If you want to understand, it's there for you. If you don't want to understand and you want to miss God speaking to you, well then, you know, you're going to miss a lot of things. You can even miss the time of His coming. You can miss a lot of things in the Word. You can misinterpret the Word. You know, and you can believe things that isn't really even actually correct in the Word because you don't spend time in the Word. But I've been teaching you guys how God is the same yesterday, today, and forever, how He moves in His feasts and His festivals, and how you can experience God in a deeper and more powerful way. And I've been teaching you from Passover to Pentecost, and I told you how Jesus rode in on the 10th day of Nisan, He died on the 14th day of Nisan, He rose again on the 17th day of Nisan, the 17th day of Nisan began the Feast of First Fruits. He rose on the Feast of First Fruits. Others rose up out of the ground. That was the wave offering. He rose. People rose up out of the ground with him. He went, set the captives free, brought them before the Father in heaven, and waved them as a wave offering, or two wave loaves, right? <laughs> as a wave offering. They were the first fruits of the resurrection. And then the Bible says Christ the first fruits and then those that are His at His coming. Right? The wheat harvest. So, now between the 17th and Pentecost, there's 50 days. Seven sevens. Seven weeks of seven. 49 days, which is the counting of the Omer which is the countdown to Sinai. 49 days to meeting God face to face. Wow. It's a countdown, not a count up. Damn. We're not counting up to God. There's a countdown going on right now. Time is going down. Your life ain't growing. You're getting older. Countdown Tell me about it. to seeing God. Right? <clears throat> So those 49 days is a countdown where you're in a countdown to meeting God face to face in your life. And you're going to see Him. <coughs> so those 49 days is at the end of those 49 days, here they are. They stand and they come to the mountain and then all kind of stuff goes down. They come face to face with the living God. Right? And we're going to... That's where everything goes down. That's the key to unlocking everything. That's the key when you hear Paul and all of Peter and all of them talk about, you know, the great notable day of the Lord's return and he's, the sun's going to turn black as sackcloth and the moon blood red and, and all of these things and the earth shook and, you know, the clouds. He comes with clouds and great glory and the great sound of the trumpet and thunders and lightnings. The earth shook. All of that happened on the same day over and over and over again. They are thinking of one incident that this happened on. They're all Jews. They're connecting it to one day in the Bible. And I'm going to show it to you over and over again. So you guys, that's where we're at. You ready? ready. Let's get started. All right. Thank you, Father. Let's pray. Amen. Father, you're worthy, Lord. Thank you for your goodness. No, Father, I do thank you for your goodness. But, Father, Lord, I thank you for your, your spirit. I thank you for your Holy Spirit, Lord, that you sent to us. Your promise. Your comforter, your helper, Lord, that helps us 
interpret Your Word, Father. That gives us the understanding to know, Father, who You are. Father, You don't call us servants, Lord, but You call us sons and daughters, Lord. Lord, You tell us and You show us. You don't hide from us what it is that You're doing, Lord, because You call us friends. And You let us know, Father, what it is that You're doing. Just like You told Abraham, shall I hide from Abraham what it is that I'm doing? Thank You, Lord, for giving us Your Spirit, Lord, because Your Spirit, Father, your Spirit leads us and guides us into all truth, Father. The truth of Your Word. Your Word, Father, which leads us and guides us and shows us, Father, what it is that You're doing. Thank You for Your Spirit, Father. Thank You for Your Son. Thank You for Your Word, Lord. Thank You for the people, Lord, that are here today, Lord. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would open the ears and the hearts of the people that are here, Lord. Father, I pray, Lord, that you would give them a hunger and a desire, a, more of a hunger and a desire for you, Lord. Lord, I pray that whatever it is that's going on in their life, Lord, that you would touch them, Lord, and heal them, Father. Because this is the day of healing, Father. Move over them, Lord, today. Please, Father. Please, Lord. Make us long for you, Father. Heal us, Lord, where we're broken. Fix us, Father, our broken pottery, Lord. None of us, Father, are perfect. We all have issues, Lord. Every one of us. And Lord, I, I can't wait till you come. Even so, Father, come, Lord Jesus. Come, Lord. Help me, Holy Spirit, deliver your message. Deliver hope. To deliver hope to the people that are here, Lord. Help us to be able to reach out to those that are lost. And those that need salvation, Father, I lift up Donovan to you, Lord, and his wife. Lord, the seed that was planted yesterday, Father, that you would water it, Lord, and cause it to just be to bring increase, Father. Yes. In Jesus' name, amen, amen, amen. Make a few connections for y'all. I'm not going to get crazy today. I want to teach you because I want you to know, I want you to know, just make a few connections. Some of these connections you'll know, and I'll go slow, so if you want to take notes, you can. The Word of God is so absolutely amazing and so absolutely powerful man it's it's like wow um visual fire was seen at mount sinai and that fire wrote the word of god in stone remember that at mount moriah on pentecost which was the same day cloven like tongues of fire was also seen as well but this time, it was written not in stone, but in the hearts of men and women. And they cried out as the Spirit gave them utterance. Huh? 
And as, as it was written in them, they cried out. Right? You know what's an interesting connection about stone and the hearts of men? Remember when Jesus was riding in? Remember when Jesus was riding in and the people started crying out, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Yeah. Right? You know? And they said, they told Jesus, stop them from crying out and saying that. And they said, if, if I stop them, you know, the stones will cry out. Yeah. They were crying out from their heart. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. The stones would cry out, son. You see, the com God, Jesus Christ was making a comparison. It was written in stone, and he had writ it, wrote it in their hearts. You know? Listen to this. Listen to the comparison. Jesus Christ was making the connection between Mount Sinai and Pentecost. <laughs> you heard me? That was, the, that was the connection right there. That was a connection. Do you know that the story of Ruth is read every Pentecost? Why is the story of Ruth read every Pentecost? What is the story of Ruth about? Ruth is about Boaz, the kinsman's redeemer, who redeems both the Jew and the Gentile. On Pentecost, the marriage takes place the marriage takes place on Pentecost. What was Ruth doing? She was working Boaz's field. She was working the barley harvest. She got married on the wheat harvest. Who is Boaz a picture of? Jesus. Wow. 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 Here, a little connection for you. What did... I told you guys I'm not going to get crazy today. How did Boaz... How did Boaz redeem Naomi and Ruth? Naomi, her name... Don't call me... Remember, Naomi, don't call me Naomi. Call me what? Which means what? Bitter. bitter. What was bitter in the Word of God? Remember the waters were bitter, but they casted a tree in the waters, right, and made it sweet. The law was bitter, remember? And the tree that was casted in it was what? Jesus, right? So Jesus made the law sweet, right? So that was, Naomi was a Jew. And she was bitter. She represented the law. Ah. Wow. But Boaz was the kinsman's redeemer. Right? Boaz goes to the gate. He goes to the gate. And he... Naomi's husband died and she's a Jew. Naomi and Boaz goes to the gate and he's going to redeem, he would redeem Naomi. But Naomi has a nearer kinsman. Now Boaz is a picture of Jesus Christ, is he not? Right? So who would be a nearer kinsman than Jesus Christ? God. Very good. So that would be the law. So Naomi's husband would be God. That's right. So Jesus died outside the gate of God's house. So we're going to say this is the gate. So Boaz goes outside the gate where there are ten men which represents the law. He goes to do what? He's going to redeem Naomi. Ten represents the law. He goes to the gate with ten men there. Ten represents the law that's bringing you back to Mount Sinai. And as the nearer kinsman comes in, he says, nearer kinsman, nearer kinsman.
can you come step to the side? There's, you know, and he's got ten men there. Naomi has come back and her husband has died. Will you redeem Naomi? The near kinsman says, yes, I will. Near kinsman. But she has brought Ruth, the Moabite Gentile. Will you redeem her also? No, I will not. No, I will not. The law will not redeem the Gentile. Jesus Christ will. <laughs> then he said, near his kinsman, he took off his shoe. <laughs> he said, he took off his shoe. Why did he take off his shoe? Remember what he told Moses at Mount Sinai? God told Moses, take off your shoes. The shoe represents the covenant. He took off his shoe. He said, near his kinsman, as a sign of the covenant, let this be between me and you, that I will redeem Naomi and Ruth as a covenant. <laughs> and when Jesus stood outside the gate, redeemed redeem the Jew and the Gentile. On Pentecost, the Holy Spirit came down on Pentecost and filled the Jews and the Gentiles. Hallelujah. Covenant sign. New covenant. <laughs> That's why they read it every Pentecost and they don't even know it. The story of Ruth is read every Pentecost because that's when Jesus was coming to get his bride. The Lord came down in Genesis chapter 11 when God confounded the languages in the Tower of Babel, it was on Pentecost. You're going to notice that every time the Lord comes down, it's on Pentecost. So the Holy Spirit confounded the languages in the Tower of Babel. That was Pentecost. And he brought the languages back together on Pentecost. Check this out. Jewish teachings. Enoch, the seventh from Adam, he was born on Pentecost. <coughs> And he was taken to heaven on Pentecost. <laughs> you know what's even more crazier than that? Enoch's father, his name was Jared. And it means to descend. God descended on Pentecost. Lot was taken out of the city on Pentecost and judgment hit. <clears throat> the Torah was given on Pentecost. I told you I was going to take my time today. Good. Watch this. Rahab, the harlot, was taken out of the city of Jericho on Pentecost. Wait. I think I, I, think I heard something on Pentecost with Jericho. I think something came down too. 
And I think something came, went up. Uh, hey, y'all can go do your own studies. There you go. The Holy Spirit came down on a day of Pentecost in Acts chapter 2. I'm just giving you, I, and let me tell you something. I know a bunch of other ones that I can really pick apart for, for you. I can prove to you about Noah. I can show to you with Noah. Noah entered the ark in the second month, the 17th day. He came out of the ark the second month, the 27th day. Now, you can go add those days up and you're going to say, well, that's 10 days before Pentecost. And you can get into saying, and the time changed, the seasons between spring, you know, spring feast and fall feast, God had changed the times. But we can also get into, well, the waters receded in the 10th month. The waters receded and went down. That was actually on Pentecost with Noah. I can, we can really begin to open it up to God is so absolutely amazing. Amazing. He is. And let me tell you something. I mean, He is so pinpoint accurate to the day. And I want to get off because I want to give you all good stuff today. I want you to also take notice when we get into the lesson today. I want you to take notice to the number three that will be used as we read the text. I want you to take notice to the number three, the third day, 3,000. All of these things you're going to begin to see over and over. So you guys, y'all ready to get started? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Open your Bibles. Let's get started. Exodus chapter 19, verse 1 through 11. The countdown to Mount Sinai is the countdown to seeing him face to face. Exodus chapter 19. Guys, we are going to open. The Word is going to come alive to you. The Word is going to come alive to you. Exodus chapter 19, verse 1 through 11. Y'all ready? Where's my water at? Oh, the boys took it. In the third month. Wow, the third month. When the children of Israel were gone forth out of the land of Egypt, the same day came they into the wilderness of Sinai. For they were departed from Rephidim, which means rest, and come to the desert of Sinai, and had pitched in the wilderness, and there Israel camped before the mount. And Moses went up unto God, and the Lord called unto him out of the mountain, saying, Thus shall thou say to the house of Jacob, and tell the children of Israel, You have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bear you on eagles' wings, and brought you unto myself. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice, indeed, and keep my covenant. So a covenant is being made, okay, between God and the children of Israel. Then you shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all the people, for all the earth is mine. And ye shall be a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. And Moses came and called for the elders of the people and laid before their faces all the words which the Lord commanded him. 
And all the people answered together and said, All that the Lord hath spoken we will do. And Moses returned the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Lo, I come unto thee in a thick cloud, that the people may hear when I speak with thee, and believe thee forever. And Moses told the words of the people unto the Lord. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow, and let them wash their clothes. And be ready against the third day. For the third day, the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. Be ready against the third day. So the Lord is going to come down in the sight of the people. This is going to repeat itself throughout the Bible. The apostles are going to quote this in many different forms and fashions throughout the word, and it all goes back to this. Now, okay, um, all right, next, um, let's see, uh, Uh, um, uh, the next one, the countdown to Mount Sinai. Oh, let's look at our uh, Revelations. Revelations, chapter one, verse seven. Revelations, chapter one, verse seven. Got it. Let me see if that's a. You got it already? Yep. Quick. Oh, I wanted to show you this. That was uh, is the is of seeing him face to face. I just wrote this as a note. I, I should have put it down a little bit further. Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him. And they also which pierced him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. I actually got that. I just put it as a side note on my thing. Let's look at the next one. The countdown to Mount Sinai is the countdown to his coming. So let's read Exodus chapter 19, verse 10 through 20. Go back to where you was at the top. 10, verse 1. Exodus 19, 10 through 20. It's all right. We got time. Exodus 19. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them wash their clothes. This is going to repeat itself. And be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down in the sight of all the people upon Mount Sinai. And thou shalt set bounds unto the people round about, saying, Take heed to yourselves, that ye go not up unto the mount, or touch the border of it. Whatsoever toucheth the mount shall surely be put to death. There shall not be a hand touch it, but he shall surely be stoned or shot through. Whether it be beast or man, it shall not live. When the trumpet soundeth long, they shall come up to the mount. And Moses went down from the mount unto the people, and sanctified the people, and they washed their clothes. And he said unto the people, Be ready against the third day. Come not at your wives. And it came to pass on the third day, in the morning, that there were thunders and lightnings, like today, Pentecost, and a thick cloud upon the mount, and the voice of the trumpet exceeding loud, so that all the people that was in the camp trembled. 
And Moses brought forth the people out of the camp to meet God. And they stood at the nether part of the mount. And Mount Sinai was altogether on smoke because the Lord descended upon it in fire. And the smoke thereof ascended as the smoke of a furnace. And the whole mount quaked greatly. And when the voice of the trumpet sounded long and waxed louder and louder, Moses spake and God answered him by a voice. And the Lord came down upon Mount Sinai on the top of the mount. And the Lord God called Moses up to the top of the mount. And Moses went up on Pentecost. Wow. Let's check this out. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go unto the people and sanctify them today and tomorrow and let them be ready against the third day. For the third day the Lord will come down. That was Pentecost. All right? Let's make some connections. Y'all ready? Let's note this. Let's note Joshua crossing the Jordan. Joshua's crossing the Jordan in chapter 1, verse 11. Joshua says, On the third day they crossed the Jordan. On the third day Joshua crossed the Jordan. Joshua chapter 1, verse 11. He sanctified the people and he said, On the third day they crossed the Jordan. Right? But, it was on Pentecost that Rahab, with the sound of the trumpet and the voice of, remember, they said, remember, with, they walked around Jericho seven times, they blew the shofar, and he said, shout! That's exactly what's happening here. That was on Pentecost. And the walls came down, and the people went up. It says, and Rahab was harvested, right? God told Moses to bring the people to me. The angels are the reapers to bring us to God on Pentecost, same day. Now watch this. You're going to hear this repeated over and over. So, Jericho came down and she was saved and judgment fell on Jericho, right? Yeah. Same thing. Let's look at uh, let's look at uh, go to Hosea. Go to Hosea. Go to Hosea chapter 6. I want to make some connections there for you. Hosea. Hosea chapter 6. Okay. Let me give you a little background. Hosea. Hosea means Hoshea, which means Jesus. The background of the story of Hosea, Hosea and Gomer, Israel and Judah, has played the harlot on God. Okay? God married the children of Israel, and they were playing the harlot. Alright? So, you're going to see here, when I begin to read this, in Hosea chapter 6, Hosea's name means Hoshea, which means Jesus. It's all a picture of God wooing and trying to draw the children of Israel back unto himself. So it's all about a marriage. Right? And it's a picture of Christ with the church. But I want to set the context so you see when, it's, when this marriage is taking place. Look at this. It is absolutely 
amazing. In verse 15, it says, and I'm just going to start a verse above. I'm, in 5 verse 15. I'm just going to start right a verse right above it. It says, I will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face. In their affliction, they will seek me early. And then, chapter 6. Come and let us return unto the Lord. For he hath torn and he will heal us. He hath smitten and he will bind us up. That word bind us up is the word for wheat <coughs> harvest. That's Pentecost. Watch. After two days will he revive us. In the third day he will raise us up. That's two. verse 2. Hosea 6, 2. Sanctify the people today and tomorrow and on the third day. See it? Watch. And then look what it says. After two days He will revive us. In the third day He will raise us up. Moses, go get Him and bring Him to me. And we shall live in His sight. We shall see Him face to face. Then we shall know if we follow on to know the Lord. His going forth is prepared as the morning. And He shall come unto us. Look, He shall come unto us as the rain. As the latter and former rain unto the earth. I'm going to show you the latter and the former rain, what that is, because somebody else explains that to us. Let's go on. Let's look at another one. So that's clearly the wheat harvest. Pentecost. Third day, if you don't know, it means harvest. Jesus arose on the third day. Right? He arose on the third day. He was the first fruits of the harvest. Genesis chapter 40 and 4 Genesis chapter 40 and 41, the story of Joseph of Joseph. You remember the story of Joseph with the cupbearer? Remember the cupbearer and uh, the baker? You guys remember that? The cupbearer and the baker? Remember the cupbearer, he had a dream. There was three vines before me. There was, remember that? Yeah. Uh, the cupbearer, he had, uh, it says, uh, there was a vine that was before me. It had three branches. And Joseph said, the three branches represent three days. In three days, you'll be restored back unto the position where you was. And remember, the, the, the baker had a dream also. There was three baskets. The three baskets represented three days. In three days, you'll be hanged from a tree. You see? Um, also, Joseph. Remember, Joseph was in prison when he interpreted the dream for Pharaoh. Now, what I'm telling you, all of these days, it fell on Pentecost. Joseph was in prison for two full years. On the third year, Pharaoh had a dream. He dreamed of seven skinny, seven fat cows, seven skinny, and seven fat ears of corn. That word corn is wheat. Pentecost. And seven thin. He interpreted it on Pentecost to Pharaoh. After being, after being in prison two full years, he was set free on the third year. On Pentecost. He was taken out of prison. 
reared up to the right side of Pharaoh and called Zapnath Penea, revealer of secrets. And I said I wasn't going to get fired up, son. That's all right. Go ahead. That's all right. Be good. <laughs> Joseph was a picture of Jesus. Yeah. Uh -huh. Golly. Do you know? Uh, I don't want to get off track because I'll be connecting dots for you guys. Do you know how precise God is? Do you know that from Abraham, from Abraham to the children of Israel in Egypt, was exactly 430 years. Do you know the children of Israel was in Egypt for 430 years? From Abraham to who? From Abraham to the children of Israel in Egypt. Wow. My God's kind of precise. Do you know the children of Israel was in Egypt for 430 years? And do you know that God did not speak to the children of Israel for 400 years right and John the Baptist at 30 years old broke the silence Mm -hmm. For the word of God was precious in those days. Jesus began his ministry at 30 years old, right? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And then we were set free. Are you kidding me? Can God be that precise? Yes. Can he be that precise with three days? Can he be that precise with the cup bearer? Three vines is three days. Three baskets is three days. Joseph is in prison for two years and on the third year. Can he be, can he be lifted up out of the well? Yeah. I mean, can he be lifted up out of prison? Be set free? I mean, can all of these things... How can they all fall on the exact same day and it not happen again on the same day? How can it not happen again on the same day? Where are these guys in the New Testament getting their information from? Are they pulling it out of Anaheim? Where are they getting their connection from? Where are they plugging in their flight from? Where are they getting the, Oh, Jesus can come at any time. He can come tomorrow. Wrong, 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 wrong. Well, he might be able to come tomorrow because tomorrow is Pentecost, actually. I'm wrong. <laughs> I've been humble today. <laughs> Father, forgive me. Father, I know not what I'm doing. <laughs> Did you know what I'm saying, Lord? Oh. <laughs> but when you just say things crazy, man, we know, man, God's got a time, man. He's got a time. And He lets us know these things if we study to show ourselves approved. Let me keep going, because we got some good stuff to look into. Check this out. Uh, and I ain't going to keep y'all, because I got a lot to go over. Um... The countdown to Mount Sinai. The countdown to Mount Sinai is the countdown to the marriage. Hey, I'm only going to do just a little bit more too and I'm done. Let's look and see. Let's look and see. Let's look and see what really took place at Mount Sinai on Pentecost. So... 
Let's look at Jeremiah 2.2. Open your Bibles. Go to Jeremiah 2.2. Jeremiah chapter 2, verse 2. I'm only going to tie in a two more, couple of more scriptures for you guys. I'm going to call it an early day today. I don't even know what time it is. Time to preach. I don't know. Jeremiah. Jeremiah 2 2. Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem. Now, Jeremiah was the weeping prophet. Jeremiah preached for 40 years and didn't have one convert. How would you like that? I guess he was crying. I'd be crying. I'd be, man, I'd have, how many people would have gave up? I'd have gave up a long time ago. How would you like to be a preacher preaching for 40 years and not have a convert? How many people would be saying, boy, you ain't no kind of good preacher at all? Everybody. Well, we'd be judged bad, huh? <laughs> Go and cry in the ears of Jerusalem, God said, saying, Thus saith the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth. That's when they was in Egypt. You know, they, the love of thy espousals. That's betrothals, right? When thou wentest after me in the wilderness, in the land that was not sown, that was the wilderness. Israel was holiness unto the Lord and the first fruits of his increase. I just wanted to make that connection. That was God betrothed Israel. You know, just like in Hosea. Go to uh real quick, did that bring it to John? The boy that cried out in the wilderness? No? Mm -mm. Uh, just a quick question. Just a... Mm -mm. I'm just making a connection with, you know, at Mount Sinai, God actually, there's many scriptures where God actually married the children of Israel. It was the covenant that was getting given, was a, it was a wedding. Well, it says, Thou said the Lord, I remember thee, the kindness of thy youth, the love of thy, whatever, that went after me in the wilderness. When it's after, okay, never mind, that. When they followed God in the wilderness. Yeah. Look at uh, look at Ezekiel chapter sixteen, verse eight and nine. At Mount Sinai, you know, God came down on Mount Sinai. They actually, God gave him a. Uh, they came underneath the canopy of God. It was the hoopah, and. Um, that's why we get married under, a, you know, a canopy today. And it was a wedding contract that God had given them. Ezekiel chapter 16. I don't explain this to me. I don't explain, understand Jeremiah right there. Right. Ezekiel 16, 8 and 9. I mean, the whole, the, the, all of Jeremiah, God is just, he cries out to him. Uh, Ezekiel. They all, this Israel played, you know, the harlot on God all over. Ezekiel and Jeremiah, it's, you know, I'm just trying to show a couple of those scriptures where you can kind of make some connection. The word espousal is betrothal, you know, it's about a wedding that God had married them. And it was playing the harlot, you know, idolatry. Adultery is with a man and a woman. Idolatry is when you're, you're doing it of serving other gods, and that's what they were doing, meaning that God betrothed them as a wife as a bride at, because remember they were priests in holiness he m built them a house they you know he set a house up for them you do that for your wife right. Jesus is coming back for a bride for his house right so we're all brides Ezekiel 16 8 now when I passed by thee watch this and this will make some connections for you guys um, testing this will make some connections uh, with uh, with Boaz and Ruth. You're going to see this in uh, with the kinsman's redeemer. Now, when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, and this is the importance of knowing the Jewish traditions, behold, thy time when... Wait, let me go back. Now, when I passed by thee and looked upon thee, behold, thy time was the time of love 
and I spread my skirt over thee and covered thy nakedness. Does that connect with anybody? Boaz. What? Boaz. Ah, Boaz. What's Noah? That connected with somebody, huh? Noah too, huh? Not with Noah, with Boaz. Anybody else made that connection? Y'all remember that? With Boaz, with Ruth. Listen, check this out. Let me explain that to you guys a little bit. In order to be married, in order to be married, you know, Boaz is a Jewish bridegroom. Right? So, you want to be married to a Jewish bridegroom, you need to learn the Jewish ways. Naomi begins to instruct Ruth don't go work in anybody else's field right. oh. Naomi begins to instruct the Gentile bride who wants to become a bride don't go work in anybody else's field man let me tell you something I, I, man we can read the book of Ruth and we can open some stuff up that is like wow son but Naomi, who is the Jew, begins to instruct, you know, uh, uh, Ruth, look, go in Boaz's field. You know, Boaz took a noticing to her because she was in his field. She wasn't running in all kind of other fields. That's the first thing you need to take notice to. You know, she stayed in one field. You can't be running in other men and women's field. Because if you play in the harlot, you won't be accepted. You will be rejected. You can't do that. So as she's gleaning in his field, he takes notice of her. Then by gleaning in his field, Boaz tells his servants to begin to pour out a blessing on her. Leave a little more. Yeah. <laughs> right? So then, you know, Naomi, you know, she comes and shows Naomi what she's got. Where did you get all that? That's not the usual. Then Naomi says, listen, you know, Boaz has taken notice of you. Stay in his field. Stay with his servants. So now she wants to be accepted. You know, so now, now check this out. She wants to be married to him. So now, you know, it's reaping in harvest time and Boaz is going to the threshing floor where we get the word, you know, they're going to thresh on the floor. And the threshing floor, how do they thresh the floor? Well, they thresh the floor with a tribune where you get the word tribulation. Ah, yeah. oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, we can really open some stuff up. So to be accepted... The way to be accepted is Naomi tells her what you need to do is go to him secretly. You know, you don't want to cause a big commotion, but go to his feet. Mm. Wow. Go to his feet. And what? That's right. I've always laughed about every man before he gets married is healthy. That's right. <laughs> why go to his feet? Why? Anybody know why you go to his feet? Why you got to uncover his feet? Take the shoes. It represents the gospel. The feet represent. It represents the gospel of Jesus Christ. It represents the word. It represents you're looking for a covering. It represents the covenant. You're asking to be married. <laughs> you're asking to be married. The helmet of salvation, sword of the spirit, shield of faith, breastplate of righteousness, skirt about your loins with the belt of peace and shod your shoes with the preparation of the gospel of the new covenant, the preparation of the gospel of peace. You're asking to be under 
the blood of the new covenant. You're asking to be covered. That's why he took his shoe off. And when Boaz took his shoe off, he was Christ. That, that shoe that he took off, he was the kinsman's redeemer. And what he did on the cross was covering a Jew and a Gentile. That's right. Ya ya, son. Wow, he's the door. No one gets to the Father except through him, through his feet, the bronze feet. Wow. Let that get on your son. That's why we come to the foot of the cross. That's why Mary ran to his feet. She was asking to be covered. She wiped him with her hair. Woman, what are you doing? She was at this harlot, was asking for a covering. Harlot? Whore? She's asking for a covering. They was worthy of death. The Pharisees and Sadducees was going to judge her, would kill her. And Jesus was... Wow. I'm, I was worthy of death. Worthy of death, son. But I came to his feet and he spread his skirt over me. Man... He spread the skirt. And he told Naya, he told Ruth, he said, Ruth, you know, she laid down next to him in the threshing floor. And, you know, Boaz looked up and seen it was Ruth. And he knew what she was asking for. You know, she snuggled up next to him, uncovered his feet. And he took his skirt, you know, and he knew what she wanted. And he covered her. He let her know, I'll cover you. But there's a nearer kinsman. There are nearer kinsmen than I. And if he won't do the job, I'll do it. But there's a heavy price that's got to be paid. But I'll do it. Thank you, Jesus. Well, if you knew anything about Ruth, Ruth was a byproduct of incest. That's who Ruth was. She wasn't much to look upon. She was despised and rejected by the Jews. A Moabitess whose father and daughter produced that seed who was worthy of death who come out of Sodom and Gomorrah. But Jesus loved her. Wow. He is so amazing. He is so amazing. And a near kinsman is the law. And the reason the law, the reason the law couldn't redeem the Gentiles because the law chose the Jews. And the law would bring judgment. The law would bring death. The law would look at us and judge us and kill us. And the law said, I cannot. 
I cannot do it. I can't. But the law had a son. God the Father had a son that would do it for him. Amen. Man. Golly. And you know, when you put it together, that son is his father. It is him. And the father wanted to do it. He wants to do it. He did do it. He did it through his son because of his love. He's so full of love and so full of compassion. And it was on Pentecost. It was on Pentecost that Boaz married Naomi and Ruth. (laughs) And it's on Pentecost. One day, maybe today or tomorrow, that hidden time from us, we don't even really know that Jesus Christ can come back for me and you. They say June the 12th is Pentecost. All I know is I'm waiting for my husband. I can't wait till he comes. And I'm going to be a faithful bride. And I ain't gone in no other fields. Because when he comes, I don't want to be caught in no other field. Because when he comes, if you're in another field, well, it's judgment day for you. Right. You'll be gone. I'm sorry. Because from Genesis to Revelations, you will be left behind. Either you're going to be wise or you're going to be foolish. And we'll pick up next week. The countdown to Mount Sinai is the countdown to judgment. So we all in Holy Spirit kind of thought. The oh yeah Matthew chapter 25 we'll get into that this you know Father you're so good you're so absolutely amazing Father we love you and we thank you we thank you for your spirit Father who leads us and guides us Lord I thank you Father that everybody here is yours Help us, Father. Yes. Heal us, O oh Lord. Yes. Yes. Oh, boy, I got something to show y'all. Oh, my Lord. I'm going to show you next week. It is so... You talk about I'm going to tie something in for you next week. Wow. <laughs> amen, amen, and amen. <laughs>